Hello there, train fans. T-Bone here by T-Bone's Trains, continuing on the journey from my 1964 Marks train set oval to some new O-Gage fun. Today, I want to show you blowing up the beacon. Whether it's American Flyer, Big L, or Marks, these heat-powered beacons are notoriously finicky. With an idea shared by train buddy Barry M. from Florida, let's see if I can get this puppy working reliably. So my plan is to do as little as possible to the original item, in this case the, the tower. And so, let's see. Now they do have these nice vents already molded into the top, just below where the beacon sits. Uh, I have thought about running the tubing and fasten it to the center rod. This is the ground uh, line for the, for the light as well, or maybe more a more beneficial spot is just to bring it up on the inside corner and let it float out. I'd, I'd like to see if enough air will flow through one of the vents without drilling a hole and feeding a, a tube, whether it's the, the plastic tube or a straw or some other extension, um, that would be ideal. I will have to drill a hole somewhere in the bottom to let the, the hose go through the train board. But uh, again, doing as little as possible to the original piece. So uh, my first try will be running the hose and I will for now use some zip ties on the inside but up like that and then feed it directly under the collar and just resting against the slots and I'll we'll try that in a minute and see what kind of result we get with that. Stand by. So my plan is to do as little as possible to the original item, in this case the, the tower, and so let's see. Now they do have these nice vents already molded into the top just below where the beacon sits. Uh, I have thought about running the tubing and fasten it to the center rod. This is the ground uh, line for the for the light as well, or maybe more a more beneficial spot is just to bring it up on the inside corner and let it float out. I'd I'd like to see if enough air will flow through one of the vents without drilling a hole and feeding a, a tube, whether it's the the plastic tube or a straw or some other extension. Um, that would be ideal. I will have to drill a hole somewhere in the bottom to let the, the hose go through the train board. But uh, again, doing as little as possible to the original piece. So uh, my first try will be running the hose. And I will, for now, use some zip ties on the inside, but up like that and then feed it directly under the collar and just resting against the slots. And I'll we'll try that in a minute and see what kind of result we get with that. Stand by. I was able to get all of these materials at my local Petco. The pump was less than eight bucks. Uh, I think four for the hose and a buck and a half for the valve. So let's see what it'll do on the beacon. Okay, so I have the hose temporarily zip tied to the corner piece. I was able to put it right up against the vent slot right there. And let's find out. Now this hose is so soft, I was not trying to crimp it very tightly, but I, I am pinching down on this tube. So that may or may not be a, an issue. But let's find out. So we're going to Plug it in. I'm going to let you see and hear successes, triumphs, and failures. So let's find out. Attaching the hose to the unit. And you know, and it does still turn freely. Here we go with the air. Mm. 
nothing. Okay, so let's find out if this unit has enough pressure or if I've crimped the hose too much. I'm gonna disconnect the hose and try blowing Now that's obviously way too fast for our beacon, but the airflow does work and it does spin. Hmm. So next step is I'm going to take off this zip tie and, or at least loosen it and see if the, if that's restricting the airflow from this tiny little pump. This was a, a for um, aquariums up to 10 gallons. So it was the smallest pump I could find, less than $8 at the, the pet store. All right, so let me work on that zip tie and see if I can uh, make any improvement there. Well, 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 in my adventures here, um, I found that this tubing is so flexible, I was able to squish it, even just with my fingers or needle nose pliers, and feed it through the slot from above. I really, really trying to be careful with this all plastic, except for the tin ladder here, but all plastic unit. And so um, even though these look like the usual metal bend down tabs, they're plastic tabs and they're glued or fused on. So there's no way I was gonna take this off to be able to come from the bottom, but the tubing is so flexible, I fed it through the top and still coming out the, it's coming out the side at the bottom for now, but this leaves the air much closer to the, the louvers in the uh, fan on the top. And so let's find out what that's going to do for us. Up. Still, f oh dear. Okay, so as you can see, it's hitting. That's not going to let it go. So we're going to have to pull this down some. A little more. Yep. Okay. Right here, by my point, my index finger. Break that down even more. It's still through the slot, so hopefully, it's still going to let enough air flow. All right, let's give that a try and see what happens. Connecting to the pump and power to the pump. Okay, I've tried another tube. I actually tried blowing two tubes at the same time. No good result, but the second tube is, seems to be working. That's still pretty quick, but that's using my breath. The 10 gallon aquarium pump does not seem to have enough oomph to make it work. So looks like back to the pet store and try the next size up. Okay, train fans, we're back for round three. So our new piece is instead of using just the aquarium hose to feed air to the beacon, I've used a piece of plastic straw. This came a coffee stirrer. It's almost the same diameter as the hose, around, around a quarter of an inch, but when it's fed through the vent at the base of the, the beacon, it seems to hold its shape a little more. It's a little more open. So will that let enough airflow through? I've done nothing fancy about feeding the, the hose up. I want to get it working first and then I, I know we can work on making it look real nice. So we've got the, I still have the, the 20 gallon size, 20 gallon fish tank size pump. And we have the beacon play playing with the um, the louvers and how much open or close and getting as balanced as possible. 
also making sure that the tip of the hose or straw does not stick up. So it looks like we got good free flowing movement, not hanging up. So let's give it a try with some air and see what we get. Third time's the charm, right? Here we go. And there it is, turning on its own. Oh. A little noisy and a little quick, but it is turning. And stop being. And going. And stop. changing the angle a little bit and see if that affects the flow. It looks like I pulled it up a little bit too. Okay. Hmm. So if it angles back the other direction. No. So angling towards the way the blade vents are open seem to have a little better luck. And can we raise it up a bit? See how much we can bring it up before the straw interferes with the rotation of the beacon. That's worse. Okay. Seems to want to go. Okay, experiment number four. I noticed that when I blew through the tube using my breath, I could make the beacon spin, usually a little faster than what we would want, but it was spinning. So it made me think there was the volume of the air much more than air pressure. So as another experiment, I hooked up the, com the compressor as low as I could get it on that meter. So less, less than 10 pounds of, of air pressure. I've also installed a, a regular fish tank uh, air control valve. And let's see if this gives us any better results. Still constantly playing with the louvers. Um, the poor beacon, the, the aluminum housing is so thin that, that every time you move it or lay it down, things things will distort, get bent, have to uh, try and recenter them, keep the pin, the center pin balanced. So here's some air. Opening the valve, wants to go. Seems to be, oh, now it looks like it's hitting something. Okay. thought as long as I kept the plastic hose, and I know it's black on black, but as long as I kept the plastic hose below this collar, the, the, um, the base of the, the lamp base, um, it seemed to be turning freely. Let's give this one more try with the air. Wants to go. Oh, oh. So we're out of balance. It's hitting. More air, you can hear it. Well, as you can see, my work is not done here. I'd really appreciate your comments or suggestions. Tom, type them into the comment box below or email me at tbonebush at yahoo.com. Let's have fun with these trains. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.